never forget. I will never forgive. I will live on. Come along, Chloe. We're almost there. We want to go home. We can't. Why? It isn't safe anymore. I want to go home. Be brave, Chloe. Please. This is our new home. No, it's not. You must be Arthur. It's good to meet you, Mrs. Gray. Please, Adeline. Is everything all right? Hiding behind that tree is my daughter, Chloe. She's not accustomed to such change. She left so much behind. She's not alone. We just have to keep moving forwards. I'm so sorry we're late. Oh, don't be. We don't claim to be easy to find. Are we close to the house? Very. This way. Have you come far? Kent. Our street was bombed three days ago. It's no place for a child at the moment. Sounds like you were lucky to get out alive. We were. Well, you'll be as far out of sight as it is possible to be here. You'll be staying at the village's oldest and most secluded building. <laughs> there are even some in the village who are unaware of the house in the woods. Here we are. Brynhill Manor. Manor? Not what you were expecting. You never mentioned we were staying at a manor house. I thought I would surprise you. been vacant for some time. It's so vast. So cold. You'll find blankets in your bedrooms. Lanterns too. How can you expect us to stay here? It's all I have to offer. Then we will look elsewhere. There's nowhere else here. 
The next village is an hour's walk. But it's all you can afford. It's a roof over your heads, nevertheless. Shall we continue? I'll show you right. Unpack your bag, Chloe. But, Mummy. Unpack your bag, please. My father bought the manor many years ago with the aim of turning it into our family home. But he died before he ever had a chance to complete it. I've had some generous offers to take it off my hands, but in the end I've rejected them all. I realised that deep down I didn't have the heart to part with it permanently. Why have you let us stay here? Well, this place has so much unknown history, so much mystique, that I had intended to remain untouched, but your letter opened my eyes. I knew it was finally time to reopen these doors. It's ready for a new chapter, a new purpose, a new family. I've installed a bed for you in there, and another one for Chloe in there. What's that? It's locked. Where does this door lead? To the east wing. What's down there? Not much. It's fallen into disrepair. Do you have the key? Not on me, I'm afraid. Well, you have dozens of keys in your pocket. Surely one of them I must... don't have it, Mrs. Gray. We were hoping to be here for six months, maybe more. You can stay here as long as you need. Wouldn't you like to discuss payment? I could only offer five shillings a week. I won't accept a penny. No, I'm not asking for any charity. I will pay my way. Mrs. Gray, I only want to help. Thank you, Arthur. It's okay. They can't hurt us here. Are we ever going back? Are we ever going home? Of course we are, sweetheart. The war must come to an end. When? It's impossible to say. For the meantime, Promise me you'll make the best of it here. Didn't I always tell you that one day we'd have a big house and garden? Imagine the games of hide and seek we could play out there. There must be a thousand trees to hide behind. How can I make this up to you? You can't. Why? Talk to me, please. I miss him so much. I know you do. But you're not alone. You have me. One day. Don't say it! What are you talking about? Don't say it! Say what? Please! One day we'll all be reunited. One day Daddy will come home. No! Daddy is coming home. No, he isn't. How can you say that? Stop lying to yourself. He's never coming home. I'm so sorry.
Good night, Chloe. Are you all right, Mrs. Gray? Yes. This is all just a bit of an adjustment, that's all. Is there anything I can do? No, Mr. Harper, you've been generous enough. There's a lot on my mind, that's all. You fear he's not coming back? I can't bear the thought of losing him. Does he write to you? Often. We were trying for another child when he left. We're discussing names. I'm sure he misses you both terribly. Chloe needs her father. More than ever. Do you ever get lonely down here? Sometimes. Are you married? I'm a widower. I'm sorry. She lived more in 30 years than many would in a century. How can you stand it? The loss. How you deal with loss defines the rest of your life. It can make you stronger or it can tear you apart. I choose to accept that loss will hurt us all sooner or later. But if you let it, Life will hold something else for you. Something worth fighting through the pain for. It took me 
me 20 years to see it. me worried sick. Why didn't you answer? Chloe? I haven't seen this one before. She's rather scary. Don't! Don't touch her. Is she one of yours? No. What's her name? I don't know. Well, choose one. Where did she come from? I can't tell you. You can't tell me? Who told you that? She told you that. That's not possible. You know that, don't you? She's not alive. What have you done with it? I have see things when we need more sleep. Even you? Yes. Okay.
Chloe, come down, please. What's going on? We're leaving. What are you talking about? Chloe, come down now. You can't. We are. There's nowhere else for you to go. I found this place, didn't I? There will be others. Tell me why. I can't begin to explain. Look, I've done everything I can. No, it's not you. Then what is it? You'll think I've lost my mind. We aren't safe here. This place is as safe as any you are likely to find. That's not true. Even if that were the case, surely you wouldn't risk your daughter's life to search for somewhere else. Are you sure we're alone down here? Certain. What makes you think otherwise? I don't know. I know what you've been through. What you've both been through. Any mind would wander, but you're in no danger here. Come out now. Oh. You gave up! Well, I've got you <laughs> now. <laughs> Let's play again. Well, don't go so far this time. It's too late. Oh. When did you get so fast? When did you get so old? Oh, you're mine this time. Come on then. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ready or not, here I come. I know I'm close. You're good, but I'm not giving up. Great. I'm Detective Sergeant Nolan. I understand there's concerns about your daughter. Yes. Do you mind if I look around? I've searched the manor seven times over. She went missing in the woods. Yeah, I have five officers searching the grounds as we speak. How long has she been missing? Over five hours. 
Has she ever run away from home before? No. She would never run away. What, new house? Tensions at home? There were no tensions. Chloe was happy. Could she be searching for her father? No. Did you actually see her taken? No, but I heard her scream. Well, we only have 30 minutes of daylight left, Mrs. Gray, so we will continue our search at dawn. You can't stop now. Please. She's out there somewhere. And you need to rest, Mrs. Gray. Rest? My daughter has been taken from me, and you tell me to rest? Good night. Search the grounds, the woods. Have you found Chloe? Have you found her? We have someone in for questioning, which means we're getting closer. You don't have any idea where she is, do you? Time, Mrs. Gray. We need time to find her. Promise me. Promise you what? Promise me you won't rest until you find her. Dead or alive. We're doing all we can. That's not enough. Can I have a word, Sergeant? What did you say to him? Not to waste any more time. I've knocked on every door in the village, no sightings. No one's even willing to help look for your girl. But I'll keep going. Wait! 
Adeline. What are you doing in here? I was looking for Chloe. I followed her up the stairs. That's not possible. I saw her. I heard her footsteps. That could have been anything. Shadows on the wall, the echoes of your own footsteps. I heard her voice. We are alone here. Your mind is playing tricks. She's not here. Do you believe I'll find her? You believe she's dead? I still pray for her. For you. How can you be so sure? Who wrote these letters? Have you read them? Those stories are not true. <gasps> she wants us to suffer as she has suffered. I know what she wrote. A vengeful witch lives within these walls. It's impossible. What if the witch has Chloe? These are lies. Every single one. Lies. <sighs> Tell me you don't believe in the supernatural. I didn't. It's make-believe. How do you know? How can it be true? She has a history of delusion. Who is she? Her name is Mary. Mary Thomas. She lost her husband a few years ago. But she would wait by the window all day, every day for his return. She claimed he was on his way home. To help her escape her pain, I suggested she stay here. Her imagination got the better of her. When you're alone and scared, if you let it, the mind can conjure horrific images. What happened to her? Due to the nature of her madness, Mary was sent to a psychiatric institution. But what if Mary was right? Come back to reality. Please. Do you have children? Do you have any children, Arthur? A boy. If there was a chance, even the smallest chance, that going down the darkest of paths would lead you back to your missing boy. Would you close the door to your superstition? Or would you walk the path? I would do whatever I could. This is my reality, Arthur. Everyone else is giving up on her. If she's alive, then I am her last hope. Spirits do not attach themselves to dolls. When we die, we go up there. Evil can take a hold of anything. Do what is necessary. Good luck, Adeline.
Can you hear me? Chloe? It's me. Come closer. It's time to go home. I want to play. We need to go. No! Come closer. I want to play a game. We're leaving. We're going home. <laughs> <laughs> you can't stop seeing her, can you? Your imagination knows no bounds. You want to know where your daughter is, don't you? Tell me. <laughs> Not yet. Is she alive? Tell me where she is. Where did you find such bravery? Why won't you tell me? I want to see how far you will go to see her again. Whatever it takes. Look at me. Look at me. I can't. <laughs> if you cannot face me, 
How can you face the truth? <laughs> you are giving up on her, aren't you? I'm not afraid of you. Well, you should be. Are you going to tell me where my daughter is? Tell me where she is. I'm not running away. Where is she? You are not ready to know yet. <laughs> going to tell me what happened? Are you going to believe me? Yes. It's all true. Mary was right. We're not alone down here. Have you seen her? Have you seen the witch? She knows where Chloe is. She's taunting me, testing me to see how far I'll take my search for her. And do you think she's killed her? I won't allow myself to. I'm sorry. For what? I promised you I would do everything I could to help you. I doubted you. It's not too late to find her. I need to know why the witch has taken my daughter. Mary's letters. I need to read them. All of them. Mary has never recovered from her husband and child being taken from her. Her grasp of the real world is fading. Mary has offered many identities to us. The most disturbing of all is the witch. She believes the witch took her family away from her. doing this. You believe they took your child. Your husband. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> How little you know. Spare me your vengeance, Mary. I'm sorry you lost your family, but I won't let you take mine. Chloe! <laughs> Are you ready to know the truth yet? Open the door! You could.
couldn't save her. You let her die. <laughs> you helpless, poor little child died. You killed her, Mary. You! How are you, Mary? Do you remember who I am? My real name? I'm Dr. Miles Littner, and you've been under my supervision here for almost two years now. Although you've offered us many identities, it's, it's encouraging to be talking to you at last, Mary. Where am I? This is a psychiatric institution. A lunatic asylum? No. We are here to help people, not to punish them. You've done nothing wrong, Mary. Has it come back to you? Your past, what happened to you? Some. Would you tell me exactly what you remember? Take your time. I remember smoke, screams, the smell of burning flesh. My daughter Chloe lying beneath the rubble, life leaving her eyes. Two years ago, your home in Kent was bombed. You were pulled to safety by neighbours, but Chloe wasn't so fortunate. She died that day. I couldn't save her. You ran back into the wreckage to find her, but it was too late. You did all you could. You did everything that could have been done. The war has eroded so many minds here. You're not the first to try to distance yourself from its casualties, from the truth. You couldn't live with yourself. You created a new world, a, a new identity in Adeline that allowed you to live as a strong mother again. You imagined Chloe by your side. You imagined protecting her from the dangers that killed her. In your fantasy, you could save her. But deep down, you knew the truth. Over time, it seeped in through the cracks. You couldn't stop Chloe being taken from you. Your trauma always found a way to break in in the most horrific ways imaginable. We hoped that by aiding you in your search for Chloe, that it would trigger these discarded memories, memories that would finally open your eyes to the truth, to 
to marry. Reality holds nothing for me. Not anymore. You can't bring her back, Mary. When you see her, talk to her, you're not talking to your daughter. You're talking to an imitation, a pale imitation. She's not real. Loss hurts us all. In time, let me show you that life still has much to offer. If we're to make any progress, you need to accept the truth. You have to let her go. Can you let her go? I need to. Thank you. Once asked me what was behind this door. This is the East Wing, home to 40 other members of our family here at the Bryn Hill Institution. Getting back soon. It's nearly lunchtime. He's not real. He's not real. Are you all right? He's not real. He's not real. Are you all right? I'm fine. Shall we find Chloe? She's here. Of course. Come on. The delusions have returned. She can't keep them out. There was always a chance, but she was of clear mind no more than an hour ago. 
Mary is an extreme case. It's impossible to watch. Take it from me, there are no easy cases here at Bryn Hill. We all want the best for our patients, but unfortunately, that's not always enough. How do we get through to her? It may be time to accept... Accept what? To accept that we can't. No. No, there's always a way. Read through the files. 30 years of identical cases. When the patient reaches complete self-awareness, catharsis, and then descends this far, this quickly, they never come back. You have a good heart, Dr. Powell. Don't let it cloud your judgment. What will you do with her? No. No, there must be another way. Name one. There's little else we can do for her. I'm sending her to Ward C. A lobotomy is not the answer. I have witnessed more of these procedures than I care to remember. I truly thought we had got through to her this time. We've provided her with the opportunity to discover the truth on her own and it only brought more pain. But Mary has this inner strength. She has this inner voice that's fighting to keep her in the real world. I'm just asking you to give her one more chance, one opportunity, so she can accept the truth once and for all. Delusions of the witch will return. It's always the same routine. It's just a matter of time. I know you've seen it too. Why must she suffer any longer? She needs us to help her. Because we are almost there. She will put her visions and her past behind her. She has one more night, one last chance. But that's not enough time. This ends tomorrow morning, one way or another. What's wrong? Look after her, James. Be good for your father. I'll see you soon. Burning the midnight oil. I couldn't leave. Not tonight. How is she? I followed her every footstep. I noted her every word. And? I see no progress. But she's showing No some... significant progress. But Mary's on the road to recovery, therefore she... It's not stop. enough! It's over. Tomorrow morning she goes to Ward C. Good 
Good night, Dr. Powell. You can't hide the truth. Not anymore. I followed your advice. I looked through the archives. Then you saw the theme. The promise of progress in a patient and then disappointment. I saw reports of progress in the eyes of other doctors. All disputed and eventually overruled by you. I warned you of the danger of letting your heart rule your head. You resigned them all towards C, to a lobotomy. We're here to help them, to make the difficult decisions, to stop, stop them talking. Tell me about Frank Harris. Forgive me, my memory fails me. How about James Isaac? Janet Parker? Why did you hide their files? What's still no recollection, Doctor? Refresh your memory. Because it's all in here. Just like Mary. All three were once patients here. Paranoid schizophrenics. Three wildly different characters, three different issues, but they shared one belief. A belief denied by you. A belief that you still deny today, even to yourself. Through her haunted doll, the witch lives on. Search too hard for logic in the beliefs of a paranoid schizophrenic and you end up believing them yourself. The witch is tormenting the weak-minded patients under your care. And you silence those brave enough to describe what they see. You label them delusional and if you believe that you can get away with this, you are more delusional than any. Now why are you hiding the truth? I won't let a fucking lie destroy what I have here. What I have and you won't silence Mary, and you will not silence me. Do you hear me?
Dr. Lipner? Yes. BC Jones, Harrington Police. May I have a word? Yes, of course. Sit down. Can I get you a drink? Uh, no, thank you. It's no trouble. I'm on duty. Oh. Yes, of course. This isn't a social visit, Doctor. Clearly. I've been assigned to a missing persons case. The person we're searching for is your colleague, Dr. Charles Powell. Tell me, when was the last time you saw Mr. Powell? Um, last Friday. We were assisting a patient, a particularly challenging patient. Ah, uh, yes. Mrs. Mary Thomas. Yes, that's correct. Yes, I'd like for you to arrange a meeting for me and Miss Thomas, if possible. I am afraid that won't be possible. I can organise a warrant if needs be. You misunderstand me, Constable. Following her treatment, Mary Thomas is not capable of talking to anyone. Hmm. Dr Powell is relatively new here, learning the ropes. He gets emotionally attached to the patients. He can almost feel their pain. I suggested he left early that day, took some time away from the asylum to clear his head. I believe it was about... Let's stick to facts, shall we, Doctor? I sent him home at four o'clock. Well, that completely contradicts what his wife says. Mrs Powell said that he was here working all night. Impossible. And you're sure? I remember it vividly. I wished him well, he thanked me for allowing him time away, and he walked out of sight, off the grounds. What was he wearing? I don't recall. And did you say you remember it vividly? He wore a hat, a coat. What was the colour of this coat? Is that important? Answer the question. Grey. A statement that matches that of Mrs Powell's at last. He always wore a grey coat. Perhaps... this. An odd thing to forget whilst walking home on a dismal day in December, wouldn't you agree? I spotted this grey coat buried on the staff coat rack. It matched the coat description his wife described exactly. The last time she saw him. We all own a grey coat. What attributes this particular coat to him? A prescription in the left pocket to Mr C Powell. So maybe he left it behind. Some may suggest he didn't leave at all. And what does it suggest to you? I'm merely here to ask questions. And Mrs Powell received a telephone call that evening. It was from her husband. He said how he needed to work late and that he had to have a conversation with you. He seemed agitated. What could that conversation have been about? Something tells me you think you already know. Did you have that conversation? Did you have some sort of confrontation? No. Mrs Powell described her husband's demeanour as agitated, frustrated, at the way you deal with mentally fragile patients. My patients are like family to me. They are family. I treat them like my own. Did Mr Powell ever witness you mistreating a patient? No. You really should try this whiskey, Constable. It's Jim Watkins' favourite. Yes. Sir James Watkins, the Chief Constable. You know him well. We share a love of golf. He has a good swing, but he's a terrible putter. You should be careful what allegations you make against me, Constable. You may find this becomes a career-changing case for you. You sound like a man that has something to hide. No, I'm afraid it is Dr Powell who has something to hide. 
If you were half the detective you think you are, you would have searched both his coat pockets. He would take the wedding ring off. It was a ritual, a routine. All he told me was that when he put the wedding ring back on in the morning, in his mind, nothing had happened. A mistress. Mrs. Powell is not the only woman in his life. In the minds of those around him, he made sure he was here on Friday night. And in fact, he would have been with another woman. I need a name. Miss Beverly Shaw. And where can I find Miss Shaw? Well, until Friday night, you would have found her in Church Street, number 59. Along with Miss Shaw, I fear Dr. Powell is another casualty of Friday night's bombing raid on Harrington Town. Such a tragedy. I'm afraid Dr. Powell may remain a missing person indefinitely. I trust you can see yourself out. Give my regards to the Chief Constable when you see him, won't you? Doris, I need you to be brave, to be honest. Can you do that for me? I want you to tell me what happened to you tonight. And I, and I heard the door unlock. It slowly opened. And I thought it was you. <laughs> so it had to be. But you wasn't. It was someone, someone, something else. What did you see? <sighs> Nothing. An, an empty corridor. And, and then I heard this sound of a child crying on the stairs. 
upstairs and I how how could I just lie there? I couldn't I, I wanted to, to help her, to comfort her. Doris, are you taking your medication? He was no child, Doctor. He was something else. Are you taking your meds? He was a dull Doctor Lindner. He was a dull. No ordinary doll. There was life behind its eyes. It was a living doll. suffered a hallucination, nothing more. We've been down this road before. For, for weeks, you were giving me a story about a, a man looking through your window. You told me he was trying to kill you. You were wrong. In time, you came to accept and understand that you were mistaken. Not this time. We share this asylum with a spirit, Doctor. A hateful spirit. None of us are safe. Not even you. And you know that I'm right. And you, even now I can hear her. She's talking. What is she saying to you?
All right, here we are. We are here finally on the grounds of the Bryn Hill Mental Asylum. If you've been on this channel before, you know how long I've waited for this day. And if you're new around here, hit that subscribe button. I have brought Emma along for this one. She's dying to see inside it too, as you can tell. Uh, so yeah, this asylum has just been closed down. It's safe to say that it has housed many people who were mentally disturbed. And yeah, many people are said to have died here. For decades, staff and patients have gone on record claiming to have witnessed paranormal activity here. So if we can get a shot of something or anything close to what they wrote about, then uh, this is going to be good. place is over 400 years old. Can you imagine being a patient here? It is pretty creepy. Well, that didn't work. We'll have to try and find a broken door or window, maybe around the back. Emma? Emma, what's wrong? Why? I just... Uh, I can't, Sam. I can't do this. It's just an empty building. We'll be in there for 20 minutes tops, I promise. What are you afraid of? When I looked through the window, I saw something move. Like... A shadow or... Something, okay? Are you sure? Uh, no, but you know what they saw. What, do you believe them? Like, truly? No. Then what are you afraid of? That they're right. Can you be brave? Just take me home, please. Look, we're going to set up the cameras, we'll have a little look around, and then we'll go home. Got ten minutes. That's all I'm asking for. Can you do that? For me? It's such a buzz. You might even enjoy it. Come in.
Okay, Sam, I've set up. Sam? Sam? I told you, there's no one here. We're coming. It's just us and some creepy doll. What doll? In the chest there was a doll, I, I swear. Oh, that's funny. No. Okay. 